everybody how you doing this is Alec Hi. this video I've been wanting to make for about 15 months if not more um, and I'm couldn't be more excited about going out and fishing on a charter boat again it's uh, it's been a rough run with this pandemic thing huh but I'm finally all vaccinated up and I'm ready to, to, uh, to give it my best shot today we are going on to the Sport King out of uh, San Pedro went out here with a couple buddies and we're gonna see how it is. It's a Tuesday, um, and uh, hopefully there'll be not too many people here, but we'll see how it goes, right? It's early, it's about uh, 4.45, maybe five o'clock or so. And uh, three quarter day, it's supposed to be pretty good. And we're gonna be running with uh, three poles today, and I'm gonna show you my setup. Morning. When I get on the boat. Thank you. Watch your step. What? Sorry, man. We're having a good time over there. It's pulling up on this white fish nowadays. This is a bigger one though, I think. It feels like it. Either that or a foul hooked it. <laughs> We're here on the uh, north side, I guess, Catalina. Just whitefish grounds, just filling our sack, just getting some stuff. Got another one here. That's, uh, what is that? That's not a whitefish, man. The black. Sorry, I got somebody else's line right here too. You all want this, dude? Don? Do you want it? Oh my god. Yeah, white on the rock. What do you think that is? Alright, 
so we're just finishing off the trip here. We're actually heading back to the harbor right now. Again, I was today, I was on the Sport King out of San Pedro, and it was pretty cool. We toured all around the uh, island, all around to the top. Did a bunch of uh, top water, uh, live bait stuff, fishing for Bonito. And then we did some uh, shallow water stuff and mid water stuff kind of thing. Anywhere between like 100 foot to uh, maybe like 250 feet or so. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty low uh, fish count today. Got a bunch of white fish, I got a sculpin, got that bonito. Um, overall, it was a great day. Great to get out of the house. Thank goodness uh, back on the, uh, the water and uh, gonna be enjoying myself and coming out a lot more charter boats in the future. Today actually had quite a few uh, people on this boat. It was about 30, 32 or so. Had a couple of guardies in here, but uh, overall it was still manageable because uh, you know people were just kind of all over the place. But it was still uh, you're still able to get where you need to go. So pretty good day overall. So take care, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be showing my setups and everything as I do a little setup video before the next one, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Take care, all. Bye. Okay, so we got off the Sport King, had an awesome time. Uh, it's a really cool boat. It's three quarter day, went all the way to Catalina, and we just kind of um, hit the main side, and then we just kind of walked around the front of it, I guess, um, looking for anything really. We had a bunch of brand new people on the boat on board, but half the boat was filled with a company. Um, we did pretty well with the Bonito. Um, cut quite a few on the top water, and then we started fishing for bottom water just to fill sacks with white fish and random stuff. I didn't see any kind of sheephead come up, um, but uh, I just want to talk about my tackles so now. Talk about the gear. What I brought today was my Calstar 278HC, and what it is is a 15 to 40. It's a all glass though um, type of rod, but it's got really nice. Um, bend to it. So 15 to 40 and that's what I'm using for top water. That's what I'm using for my Bonito stuff and live bait applications. It's paired up with a MXJ have it MXJ 64 to 2 speed um, and it has like a little plug in there right now because I'm constantly practicing uh, casting with uh, super light uh, weight because just casting with anchovies in this thing so I just keep going back and forth. Um, it's spooled with 50 pound um, J braid multicolor and I top shot it with 20 pound fluoro for, um, to keep the, uh, the sight down. And I was using like a size one, I think, hook on this thing. And I was able to catch uh, a couple bonito with that. Um, great rod, nice bend, and very sensitive. So I really like this setup for um, light duty, um, you know, top water stuff. Like I said, with live bait. I can even go to the bottom with this thing. Uh, as a 20 pound rig, 30 pound rig even, um, and hit, uh, you know, things like using like uh, little jigs and whatnot, going up and down. I prefer a little stiffer of a rod if I'm going to be using more than six ounces. So today I was using, I think, four to four ounces and six ounces. So this rod was just fine, and I did go down to the bottom with it several times. So it's easy for that. It's good, good at multi application. All you got to do is just cut the top of the line off and hang a, your jig on there, and you're, you're fine to go. It doesn't matter if you use fluoro or if you want to top shot it with uh, some mono for some stretch, that's fine too. But that's my first rig for today. <clears throat> the second rig I was using today was a Daiwa setup. This is the Proteus. It is the. Um, 15 to 30, 8 foot, medium heavy rod, and it's a nice, it's got really nice whippy action, it's really cool, and I use this for all top water kind of jigs and stuff right now. It's paired up with a Daiwa Lexa 400, spooled with 65 pound Max Quattro. Um, the, for those who don't know, the Lexa's got really high speed, it's a 7.1, it's the wind, it's old wind version of it, but it's uh, really nice still. I still feel it's got enough torque. Uh, if you're working those uh, top water jigs and it's good for any kind of like cold snipers or irons and that kind of stuff it's easy to cast because it's got the little bait lever and it's um, nice to get out there careful though 
The rod that I use right now is just a 15 to 30. So it's a 20 pound setup. If you're going for those bigger giant yellowtail, this is probably not the right rod for that. You might want to step it up just a bit, but you can still use that reel. This reel is fine to be using for a 20, 30 pound setup and you're just fine. Um, the rod, you know, it might be a little bit uh, too loose for that, but some people uh, appreciate this rod for that. I, uh, I'm a little bit apprehensive about it, but when I start catching more topwater stuff, we'll see how it works out. The final rod I, I brought today was a my bottom fishing rod. It's all things rock fishing. It's what I use for everything I want to do, whether it's anything down from 100 feet down to 600 feet if I have to go. This is the setup I'm going to be using, and it's it's stout enough to be handling even the bigger yellowtail. If it's down there, um, I can use it for yo-yo jigging, but mostly it's used for dropper loop stuff, whether it's double dropper loop, reverse dropper loop, any of those applications. This is my go-to rod for everything rock fish and down on the bottom. So it is the Californian Tri-Helix 809H. Basically what that is, it's an 8-foot rod rated at 25 to 60. It is a little bit thick, it is a little bit more uh, stiff, but you gotta remember that when you're using those 6, 8, 10 ounce weights because of the current, when you drop it over the edge, your rod is already bending. So you don't want necessarily all that to happen. So you want to get a nice even mix between where the rod is bending, but you can still feel it and you can still get the sensitivity without getting too much and digging in too much of the backbone of your rod, right? Because at one point, the rod tip's going to be bending over and you're in the backbone now where, where you start to get really stiff and heavy and you, it's harder to feel and get any kind of sensitivity towards the fish biting. This rod is perfect because it's got the tri-helix composition. It is the same rod as the Phoenix, using the same blank as the Phoenix Axis rod, for anybody who's, who's uh, understands that and he likes using the Phoenix rods. Um, it is a composite blend of graphite and glass and um, some proprietary materials that they said. That's a tri, that's the third part of it. It is paired with the Pen Fathom 25 NLD2. And basically what all those letters mean is a Pen Fathom 25 um, size. It's a narrow, it's a lever drag, and it's a two speed. Okay, that's all that means, NLD2, that's how you memorize that. And this reel is actually really strong. It's got a 5.5 to 3 heavy torque reel used. It can be used for any kind of um, yellow, yellow tail and yellow fin applications. Um, it's got a lot of drag to that. It feels real good. Um, but keep in mind that this reel brings in 38 inches per turn, whereas the Avid brings in 41. Just a little bit more, but the Avid's a little bit smaller, compact. It's a good reel, great reel too. But the only problem with this downsides of the Avid is the drag is not as heavy as what's on the Fathom. So, up for your consideration. This is my go-to setup for anything rock fishing. This will go on every single fishing trip I go on to because I just have it. It's lightweight and it's strong and it's um, it's not that expensive. I think the reel goes for um, uh, a guy on sale at the Turner sale for about 240 bucks, 230 bucks, all spooled up. It's got spooled up a 65 pound. Um, mono, uh, sorry, 65 pound Max Quattro line. It's got about 500 yards on there. It's perfectly fine. Then the rod goes for about 200 and something, I think. But um, that's my fishing combo. Let's talk about our terminal tackle and our setups. Now, between trips, I spend a lot of time thinking about fishing and doing all kinds of fishing and learning about stuff. And I tie all my rigs at home. Before I get on any boat, I'm done. I've got about 10 top bags. They're just this. And just a simple Ziploc bag that I get and I just do all my rigs and I tie them all up and I have them in these bags ready to go. The 40 represents a 40 pound test line, that's all I'm using here. And I can easily see that there's already two swivels on this, hopefully you can see that. Now the swivel setup is kind of a different one altogether. If you're working on a charter or a party boat, you do not want to use too many swivels because there's just too many people on the boat and it creates opportunity for uh, people to tangle up with you. And it happened to me twice in this last boat I was on. So. It's quite simply, it's a double dropper loop. I have the top, I'll put a swivel onto this and I'll tie it right directly to my braid on my reel. Bring it down, here's an offset piece, it's gonna be a, a hook. Generally I'll use anywhere between like a size, uh, size one to two watt, maybe three watt. And some people even says go as high as like a 12 watt hook. It depends on what you're fishing for. 
Then there's about 18 inches or so between there's another dropper loop, same type of thing, same hook. If you want to vary the hook up, you can change the hook if you like to, different size. That's what's really cool about a triple, uh, double dropper loop like this. You can even change the line if you want to. If you think you're going to get into some more rocks and everything, you might want to use fluoro just for its abrasion resistance. Not so much for its seat, you know, it can't be seen. Um, invisibility, but just because you might uh, rub it up against the rocks. The same thing that I do with spotties. Then at the bottom, the last piece of it, it's just about 12 inches or so, and then I have a loop at the end of this. And the reason why the loop is there is because when you get your terminal, your um, your little torpedo weight, you just slip it through there and you can quick change this thing and it, it comes right off. Um, another quick tip for you, a lot of people on the bottom piece here, you can actually make this a light lighter line. You can make it like 10 pound test if you want to. And the reason for that is because if you do get hung up on the bottom, instead of losing all your hooks and all your rigs and everything, you can just pull up and hopefully break off the um, the sinker. Other people will tie like a little overhand loop here just to make a little weak spot so when you're pulling it up, you'll lose the weight but you'll keep everything else. It's an opportunity. Anyways, something to think about. Double dropper loop set up, simple and fast. Um, when I tie them myself, when I'm going to go onto a, a body boat where I know there's going to be a lot of people there, like a half day, I won't use swivels, and all I do is I'll use what's called a T-knot. You can find the T-knot video from Senker Fishing, I think it was, Sink, Senko, Senker Fishing, something like that, and he uses a T-knot that helps the, the line stay away from the, the main line, so it keeps the loop away from it. And that's all I do, and I loop it through a nice little hook there, and, and we drop it down to the bottom with a... Um, I generally won't go below a 4 ounce. I haven't, um, so I'll be using a 4 ounce and uh, up to 10 ounce if I have to, but that's all the loop it is, and, and I bring, like I said, I'll rig like 10 of these things in different tests between 25 and 40, just in case we do get into some bigger stuff and I want to get a more, a stronger line, and all I gotta do is just cut that top line, replace it with this, and, and off I go. When I'm done, I do not try to save these things. I save the pieces off of it, I cut it all up, Throw the line away, keep the pieces, and I'll just retie them again for the next round. I don't care. Line is like super cheap. This is not floral, this is mono stuff, and I'm just, it doesn't matter to me. I'll just save the pieces for it, the, the hooks, the, the swivels, and everything, and I'll just retie everything because, shoot, I got 10 minutes, 15 minutes just going to do rigs and stuff while I'm watching TV. It's just fine. So then I'll just loop it like this. I'll stick it in my little baggie here, and off I go. And um, these are all new. And then I don't have to worry about the line having, you know, any kind of problem to it. Because these rigs can be quite, you know, you, you could be spending a lot of money if you keep losing rigs. Um, so you want to try to keep everything as, as clean as possible. And just have them in your bag. And you can just pull it out like a piece of candy if you want to. Just just change it out. You get tied up. You get uh, uh, tangled with anybody else. Cut it. Cut all your stuff. Save your time. Run to your bag. Tie out another one on the top of the swivel. Off you go. Just change out your, you know... Cut all your, your sinker and everything off, just just this quick change, sinker mount, and off you go and you're on the fish again. Well, hopefully that helped. If you guys have any suggestions about what you use, let me know. Um, I'm fishing in the Southern California area. Please leave a comment below. Tell me about what you think is right and what's wrong about my combinations or what I my mentality about what I'm doing. I'm happy to learn from everybody and we can build like a little community here about people talking and, and fun stuff about fishing. If you have a chance, if you're new to the channel, appreciate the like, subscribe, comment below. And we'll talk to you soon, all right? We'll look for some more. Talk to you later. Bye.